This is Wonder Soul, a weekly podcast series featuring a variety of topics dealing with life's many passions and experiences. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Bearded Buddha. This is another episode of review four. Uh, for this episode, I just got back from seeing Aquaman, so I'm just gonna give you guys my thoughts on how the movie was and is DC finally making a turn for the better and um, just my overall impression with the film um, as a whole. Uh, I am a comic book fan so uh, I kind of nitpick with different things when it comes to the stories and the characters and how they translate on film but other than that um, you know just wanted to talk about this film and I thought you know why not talk about it with you so i hope you guys have been enjoying these reviewing episodes uh <laughs> i'm not a professional film critic or a reviewer of any sorts but when it's something i enjoy and like or um you know i feel like talking about it i'm gonna start talking about it so i uh, hope you guys enjoy this other episode of review four enjoy to tell you I don't want to be king. Once he is named Ocean Master, it'll be too late. The power at his disposal will be unlike anything you have ever seen. I'm from the surface. No one's going to take me seriously. Okay, I don't even know where to begin. By winning the hearts and minds of the people, by proving to them that you're worthy and retrieving this. Ooh. I already got one of those. Not like this one, you don't. Wouldn't it be funny if Aquaman is the best movie to come from DC? And honestly, I have to say that it is. And even though it's not like the best movie of the year or of any superhero movies that I've ever seen, it's definitely a step in the right direction for DC and for that whole universe and what they have planned for the future, I hope. But overall... Aquaman was a really good time. I just got back from seeing it. It's Thursday night. I went to a five o'clock showing and um, I really enjoyed the film. Um, I don't really have any attachments to the character of Aquaman, but I never felt that the jokes and the hate that he got uh, was really deserved. Um, back in the day in Super Friends and stuff like that and really throughout the whole period of him being a character compared to Superman and Batman Aquaman's always been like the pun to a lot of jokes and I understand um, when it comes to that but then again it's not really justifiable you know what I'm saying so I felt like this was going to be really hard for anybody to make Aquaman a really, really cool character on the big screen. Um, and I think they did a really good job with that. This movie is directed by James Wan. If you don't know who James Wan is, he's directed so many different films and produced. Um, oddly enough, <laughs> he's done like The Conjuring and Insidious and uh, one of the Fast and the Furious movies. And so that to me was kind of like a really wild choice uh, to make this movie. But it also just shows how diverse of uh, a director and just creator he is. So, um, you know, hats off to you. I think you did a really good job with this movie. Um, so with Aquaman, I remember feeling kind of, I guess... I wouldn't say I hated Aquaman in Justice League, but I just didn't really like how they really dumbed him down, or at least it appeared to be, like this really frat boy mentality of, um, you know, just like, yeah, man, let's get it. <laughs> Where's the bars at? Now, granted, in this movie, you see him uh, in, in some bars and he likes to drink. That's part of his character. I get that. But uh, I was just like, okay, you're 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 flipping it too extreme. You don't want him to be this pretty boy, blonde hair, perfect king of Atlantis, but you also don't want to make him seem like he's just dumb as a rock and just kind of like that stereotype of like a jock meathead vibe, you know? 
But uh, I think Jason Momoa does a fucking fantastic job in this role in this film. And that really goes to show you that when it comes to these films or really anything, sometimes the blame gets put in all the wrong directions. And I think for a lot of characters in the DC universe, I think that it it, it can be pretty difficult to translate from the comic book panels to the big screen. And I think that's one of the big problems with Superman. I don't think it's Henry Cavill. I think it's just like the writing and the direction. Here's a good example of what you do um, or what to do with a character like Aquaman who, you know, if you had to pick anybody out of the Justice League to make a movie, I don't know how many times Aquaman gets picked first. But for this film, the way they did the CGI, the way they did the story and the characters and the other actors and actresses that get cast in this movie, I think were really good picks and overall like made it a really enjoyable experience. Um, one of the cool themes about Aquaman or this version of Aquaman in particular is that this is really no spoilers. This is just like his character's origin, but you know, his father, um, he works and owns, uh, you know, a lighthouse. Um, his mother is the queen of Atlantis and, you know, they meet and fall in love and, you know, Aquaman is the product of that. And one of the cool themes that they really harp on in this movie is that Aquaman doesn't feel like he is entitled to be a king or a leader. And he doesn't really feel like he belongs to either world. And in today's modern society, you know, you have a lot of kids, a lot of families that face that, uh, I guess, sort of dilemma as of being, um, you know, having parents maybe of two different religions or two different uh, races or, you know, so many different things that are not the typical quote unquote norm that a lot of people are used to. And a lot of families um, are not your just stereotyped, you know, everybody vibes the same, everybody looks the same and there's nothing wrong with that and i think this is a really cool there's like a really cool message here that they don't shove down your throat but i feel like i would have been able to relate given that situation because you know aquaman doesn't feel like he belongs um on land really you kind of see him just when he is on land he's just not giving a fuck and he's drinking and he'll save people because this does supposedly take place after justice league and I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute but um but you know he doesn't feel like he belongs to atlantis as you know as well and so he's just kind of like a drifter in a lot of ways and that's a lot of these characters in dc i've noticed if you really stop to think about it you know even superman he's not from earth uh he's from krypton um and and though these characters look like everyday people they have abilities or something that separates them and makes them different. I mean, even Batman, um, even though he's a billionaire and rich and has everything that most people would, you know, wish and dream of having, he still feels out of place. And um, even Wonder Woman, all these characters, they they um, find it very difficult to fit in anywhere because they don't really know where they truly belong, but they still don't hold like I guess a grudge or a hate or uh, exclude uh, you know any member of society uh, or any groups um, but it was very interesting to see them carry that theme and I think that's a really cool theme that I hope speaks to a lot of people that you know can pick up to uh, you know on that and also you'll start seeing that a lot more because it is a reflection of our society and uh, so I'm, I'm really I'm really down with that. Um, so you do have this whole theme of like two different worlds, Atlantis, you know, and, uh, you know, land land walkers or, you know, us surface dwellers. But, uh, you know, that's one of the cool things is, is that uh, what's her face? Let me pull up her name, though. Um, Amber Heard, who plays Mara. Uh, the red-headed chick that you've probably seen in trailers and stuff. She's trying to tell Arthur, um, who is Aquaman, that's his real name, that, you know, that's what makes you perfect for this being a king of Atlantis, is that because you are from both worlds, you're able to lead both sides or have, you know, you're able to relate to each side of the, um, 
in this instance like kind of a like a conflict or a, you know there's a conflict coming um so i think that's really cool and um you see that cool character arc happen throughout the movie um let's get into some more details i'm going to try to be spoiler free until the very end so i'll let you guys know if uh we go into any territory like that but uh yeah they pretty much forget about justice league <laughs> which i think is a good idea uh i was very disappointed by that film um i don't think it's the worst movie ever made and i don't hate it um but really really disappointed with the way they approached that whole attempt of trying to assemble all these characters mash up all these stories uh into one film when you have characters like aquaman and the flash who hadn't had their own movies yet i'd like to see what it would have been like if we would have got this film wonder woman everybody had their own chance to shot and then we had a justice league film so maybe that's their approach in the future now that they're coming out with uh these uh, origin solo flicks um another thing about the origin story while i'm just thinking about it i don't really like origin movies anymore like i understand that they're necessary especially uh if you're not a fan or, or if you know you don't know like the source material it's a must but i think uh for someone like me and maybe like you or uh who knows these characters and grew up with them um after seeing so many of these superhero movies over the years and seeing all these origin stories uh, man it can kind of burn you out you kind of just want to hit the ball rolling and uh, i think they do a good job here i think people understand that you don't want to start fresh and just drag it out so i think there's this new approach of kind of picking up in present day but you see these flashbacks or you know go back and forth and they do that for like the first half of this movie maybe not even the first half like the first hour for sure where you uh pick up on arthur today but you see like his development over the years of like you know becoming aquaman but um but sometimes that interrupts the pacing of the movie or just like the momentum so that's why i always feel like if i like this movie i can't and it, you know there's so much potential for a sequel where we don't have to set really anything up except for that story and those characters everything else is uh has already been handled but um what else um oh well visually this movie is crazy awesome to me i don't know how you guys feel about cgi i feel like when you have a movie that is primarily filled with cgi it's easier to handle um and it's okay for your brain and eyes to get tricked into thinking like what you're seeing is sort of real i mean you know it's not but it's easier to accept um and there's so much cgi in this movie so if you're not a big fan of that mm, i don't know how you'll feel about this movie because i mean honestly the only way to do this movie is with cgi because a lot of it takes place underwater there's so many different uh creatures and buildings and effects and so much you know happens underwater with uh, the city of atlantis that i mean it's it's a it's a must but i think it's really well done and i think that they um did the best job that they could with using real actors and actresses in those environments and even with like their bodies and action scenes and stuff like that but to me it, it looked really cool um if you liked when black panther got to wakanda and you see wakanda for the first time and you're like wow this is really cool just the way it looks like that futuristic vibe or just like oh these guys are more advanced than like what i would see if i went to like atlanta or new york or la or something um atlanta's uh looks beautiful looks a fucking amazing i loved the colors i loved just the technology and i loved how the um I guess like the costumes and the uniforms of all the characters throughout the whole movie but they really set this world up and it's really really cool it's very unique and um it's like dc has heard all the bitching and moaning about you know the Zack snyder vibes of being like this dark gritty gray uh, world now it seems like they're trying to blast us with like color and i'm not really against that because if i had to like sidebar real quick this movie has a lot of to me personally like thor ragnarok vibes in some ways 
and Black Panther vibes. Um, you can tell that there's certain influences from those movies. Um, why I say Thor Ragnarok? Uh, Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite superhero movies, hands down, um, top to bottom. It doesn't really copy or mimic that, but I think that they learned from the mistakes of Marvel when they first approached the character of Thor. Um, Thor and Thor Dark World, which is you know one and two of the whole Thor trilogy, um, are probably some of the least favorite. Um, Marvel movies and I think that um, though they're not like terrible um, I actually don't mind Thor but for me I want Thor to be in Asgard or on some other adventure when he's just on Earth unless it's for the purposes of being with the Avengers I really don't like it I hate the whole stories of when a character gets like knocked down and they lose their powers and now they're just boring regular me and you um, I'd rather see them like kick ass and do fun, awesome superhero stuff. But um, that's my little rant on that. So, anyways, I, they in those two Thor movies, they really tried to make Thor serious and very Shakespearean. And um, Thor's a god of thunder. He's uh, um, mythical in in a lot of ways, and I think Aquaman can relate because Aquaman's the king of Atlantis. Um, he's not the king of Atlantis in this film, um, but you can see that you know Atlantis, Asgard, Wakanda, the, the themes of like royalty and ancient civilizations that are futuristic or have you know tech and stuff. But they probably saw how people reacted to the Thor that got toned down to be more fun and lighthearted. Um, I wouldn't say dumbed down, but you know, it just seemed like he was just having a good time and he was strong, but he didn't really, you know, speak like he does in the first couple films, even in the Avengers, if you really think about it. But, um, I think they did a good job by like letting that be an, a good example of what not to do. <laughs> and, and that's what they did with Aquaman. I mean, Jason Momoa does a really good job of like, He's not a dumbass. Uh, he's very smart, but he's also just like playing this role, like I mentioned earlier, where he doesn't really care because he feels like nobody really cares about him, like because he doesn't really belong anywhere. So he's just trying to drink and have a good time, and he'll save people and um, do what's right. But you know, he's not trying to be like very heroic, and he's not trying to be like Superman. Um, so when you have the Black Panther aspects, you have this whole thing with the royalty and challenging the thrones and stuff like that. I think they pulled a lot from that. And I mean, when they show up in Atlantis, like you get that same vibe of like in the beginning of Black Panther when they show up to Wakanda. But, you know, hey, I mean, it's not like they're copying anything. It just feels like, OK, they 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 saw what worked and they drew some kind of influences. That's my opinion. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But regardless, um, Aquaman, this film is very fun and lighthearted for the most part. There are some serious tones. You know, there's some things that happen. Nothing too crazy. But um, it's just fun. From start to finish, it's just a good time. It's really fun to see in the theater, especially with all the CGI and the colors and the action to see on the big screen. So if you do want to see this or have any interest, I do suggest you go check it out in the theaters um, or wait until it's on Blu-ray and check it out like on a nice TV. But um, it's fun. And that's a good tone switch from what we've been getting. I feel like with Justice League, what really fucked that movie up too was that they were trying to make adjustments halfway during the race. You know, and I feel like that either pays off or it wrecks it. And for that movie, I think it wrecked it. You see a lot of characters acting out of character, like when Batman starts joking around and just things just felt like they were trying to make adjustments a little too late. And maybe some of that goes to uh, Zack Snyder taking a step back and then uh, uh, Josh Whedon coming through. And um, who knows? I'm... I'm kind of forgetting about Justice League. I own it, but it's only just so I can remind myself that they tried to make this movie. Um, 
but like the Aquaman you see in that movie and this one, they're not completely different characters, but this one's obviously the better version. And maybe that's what they needed to do. Maybe if you watch Aquaman then went and saw what they tried to do with Justice League, it would make more sense. But, you know, who knows? But overall, it's a very fun and lighthearted film. And that's another thing that I think they saw from Thor Ragnarok. It's just like people like color and people like just a good fucking time. There's a, there's some jokes in here. There's some humor. Um, you know, and Aquaman and uh, the character, you know, he's kind of just like your, your everyday kind of dude. He just doesn't seem like he takes things super serious. Like his whole motivations throughout the film really come off as um you know i just i'm doing what i have to do i really if you left it up to me and i didn't have to do what i'm about to do um you wouldn't see me here you know so you get that attitude from him but he's not like bitching and whining about it so it, it, it there's like a good balance there um but one of the things that if i had to pick something i didn't like but i also understand i think is that this movie from start to finish is fast paced and this movie i think clocks in at like over two hours on the runtime so that's like two and a half hours of just boom just going from place to place here's this character this is what's going on cool now we're going to go back and show a uh, young aquaman boom now we're back okay we're over here all the cgi all the colors all the everything just being shoved at your face there's certain scenes where it's really hard to tell what the hell is going on because of just being underwater maybe certain scenes there's like kind of like trench uh settings and so many things like with water um <laughs> but it's it's understandable why they would want to keep the pace up i think i really want to think that they're um they're hoping that if anything no matter what you say about this film you can't say it was boring um they didn't want aquaman to come off as boring they wanted you to be sitting there having a good time having something really cool to look at and really liking the character of aquaman he's a badass he's having fun he's just kicking it and um but he's not too serious and it's not boring it's like kind of the exact thing i was mentioning when it comes to like justice league and what Zack snyder had done up to that point with um with the dc universe it's like they really want to like hey look we we heard y'all we're, we're 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 taking this direction now so in a lot of ways it's like okay well that's good uh i hope you guys keep this up but just because you're heading in that direction doesn't mean that you perfected it yet so i hope that you take whatever criticism or whatever feedback you get from this movie and just keep that in mind moving forward and um hopefully just kind of slow it down but i feel like they had to like really slam it in with a bunch of stuff and that's another thing about like the back and forth origin story at the beginning half of this film it's like just a lot of explaining because you just get thrown into this whole world um they have to tell you everything and that's one of the things about origin films that i don't really care about it's just like all right this is atlantis how did atlantis get here why is aquaman here how did this happen you know and it's a, just a lot of backstory and so that can you know m make it a little boring for those parts especially if you know the source material already so i'm speaking from that perspective but um yeah, i mean it's understandable you know and that's why with sequels i feel like you can either get better or you get worse and by better i mean like you already you've set up everything now we can just have a good time and have a good story and um when it comes to the cast though i think besides jason momoa you had amber heard william defoe patrick wilson nicole kidman's in this and many others i think they all were really good i think they were really well casted um you know a lot of people think of aquaman as like the blonde hair you know pretty boy and i think this like more rugged you know bigger buff look for aquaman really is another way of dc going like look <laughs> aquaman's not lame is he he's pretty cool he's a badass and i think that's like um a good um decision on their part and um you know as far as everybody else that was in this movie uh black manta man fucking black manta was dope like his 
his music and the music throughout the film is really good i think and i like that they really tried to develop a theme for aquaman and for these characters and man black manta was just a really cool character a really he's not like the main villain but you know you can see a lot of potential in his character in the future and stuff um but just like the aesthetic of his costume like if you don't know who black manta is like google search that look at that character and then when you go to the movie you'll be impressed with like wow that's kind of that could be a weird thing to translate or you could make it look so different but they did a really good job with everything here it, it, one of the things i have to applaud and respect about james wan or anybody who was working on this film is that you know they pay a lot of respect and they're very loyal to the comic book uh visions of these characters you know when you see aquaman and this is no spoiler it's in the trailer but when you see him in that orange and green it looks pretty dope <laughs> i mean a lot of people were probably worried about that he didn't have that look in justice league so to get that it's very very fucking cool and that it works is even cooler so when it came to black manta when it came to patrick wilson's character uh king orm who is like the um what was it the ocean master i think but his you know costume looks pretty identical to what i've ever seen of him in like dc animated films and um what else yeah i've seen some of the comics but you know like i've told you guys i'm not a huge aquaman fan but that's not to say i don't like him it's just you won't see me go purchase a bunch of aquaman stuff uh, <laughs> maybe after this film i might i was i was actually pretty tempted but um but you know the cast is just really cool and you know nicole kidman coming in there i think that was really nice to see her uh adapt that role as she's like the queen of atlantis and william defoe i've always liked william defoe if you don't know who that is he played the green goblin in the raimi uh spider-man flicks and they're just a good cast it felt like thank you thank you for getting the casting down that's one of the biggest things that i always try to applaud when it comes to these films no matter what happens like with the snyder stuff right you know i know people have their their gripes about ben affleck as batman but to me he looked like the best batman um and that's a whole nother rant but uh it was just really cool to see that they got all these characters down where they look like the characters from the books and i'm not like super picky when they you know when they cast like if, if somebody is like a different race or a different gender i don't really flip my wig but it's just cool to see like that they found somebody in real life that looks like the characters from the the comic book panels and stuff so you know seeing all the costumes in the world and the setting and seeing that they paid respect to that and it was just gratifying it was very uh satisfying is what i mean i don't know why i said gratifying but um and, and like i've told you guys jason momoa as aquaman i think was a really good good choice um i'm glad they didn't pick some blonde haired dude and just try to pick that version of aquaman to uh to um represent and black manta you know if they do all that stuff in the future man that's ooh, that's gonna be interesting and that's gonna be super fun to watch um but also with this movie being a lot of cgi and being underwater a lot of the times i think they did a really good job it was actually really cool like the whole city of atlantis looks awesome and that water atmosphere a lot of people were worried about it like how are they gonna do that even the actors were kind of hesitant on like all right so i'm reading this but how are we actually gonna get this to you know work and they did a good job like when they're moving around the action scenes and swimming and talking it all just feels like it's it's just on point um i think they can touch on some certain things with the sound like there's parts when patrick wilson's character's yelling in the in in, in some scenes underwater and it just really is in the theater i was just kind of like ah oh, shit dude tone it down because i don't know if that's just because how sound travels in the water or whatever and i'm not going to get too technical about it and that's another thing real quick um this is a ridiculous movie like from start to finish so please just like leave any true realism and and all that at the door and just enjoy it for what it is that's the only way you're gonna have a good time i've been reading um since i got home certain 
you know, reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, and you guys know how I feel about Rotten Tomatoes, um, and I just didn't really respect their negativity towards the film because of just things that are quote unquote unrealistic, and it's just like, come on, man, it's a fucking superhero film, like, really, come on, so, and we'll, we'll get into that before we end this, uh, episode, but, um, look, DC is changing, and I hope this is just like a sign of what's to come from all these characters. I know we're going to get Shazam. Um, what else were they announcing? Let me see real quick. Okay, I got pulled up right here. So Shazam is the next one after Aquaman. Looks like it's going to be good. I'm excited for that film. Um, and then obviously we got that new Joker standalone film that I've heard is not even going to be a part of this whole universe. But from what I've seen with uh, Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, it looks pretty cool. Um, so I'll be interested to see how that goes. Uh, supposedly they're going to do a cyborg film. And I know about Wonder Woman 1984. Um, supposedly Green Lantern's core. Uh, Suicide Squad 2. Birds of Prey. I've been seeing casting for that. So that should be interesting. Um, and then supposedly a Flash movie and some other ones. But the Flash movie was going to be Flashpoint. And I guess like they're holding that in their pocket in case things go to a point in this DC cinematic universe of no return. So then they can just use the Flash movie as a reset button for everything and use the story of Flashpoint for those who don't know much about that. Pretty much like Flash goes in the past to save his mom, I think, and then by doing so, he changes like all of reality. It's like the butterfly effect, you know? Um, by doing that one little thing, uh, it creates like waves of change, and that, that would be a way for them to maybe change things. Um, maybe with recasting, because we don't know what's going on with Batman and Superman right now. Um, but, you know, if they can do this and let other directors other creators come in and and have their vision for these uh characters from the comic books be told other than Zack snyder and i really don't have a lot against Zack snyder i just feel like they um they were just putting too much too much on his plate um because i really don't hate man of steel and i think that if he had just made man, man of steel and left everything else alone we would have been fine but then batman versus superman happened and they were just trying to play catch up and it was very obvious and in and, and the history books will tell like when they because they're going to talk about this error of like um comic book movies and stuff and hopefully this is the turning point and that's why i think it's funny that aquaman the character that a lot of people have been busting on for years uh is the one movie that dc and warner brothers and them probably were not thinking about making right up uh right up front like the trinity which is is uh superman wonder woman and batman but i think this is a good opportunity for them to try these new characters we've already had batman movies we've already had superman movies um until you can find someone else to do superman correctly stop put the pause button maybe give us a break with batman uh i've been hearing a lot of good things about titans and i can't wait to check that out it's coming on netflix like in january so i'm excited for that because I, I just tried the free trial on dc and i'm waiting until more stuff comes out on that streaming service before i truly commit but um you know I, I feel like they are heading in a better direction so dc is changing so it's not like what it used to be which was not too long ago i mean i know a lot of people like wonder woman i liked it too um but i don't have attachment to the character and i really don't have any attachment to aquaman but it was just kind of like a really cool like uh redemption story for the character and for dc because i want all of these characters to do well i'm a fan of both marvel and dc i don't feel like you have to pick one or the other and if you do like the Marvel movies, there's no fucking reason for you to be putting um, a lot of hate and unnecessary uh, criticism towards DC. I mean, obviously, as a fan of these characters and these worlds, growing up, reading comic books, I want all of them to do well. And there's no reason why we can't live in a reality <laughs> where both aren't. But... Um, I think maybe DC just made some mistakes and tried to, you know, catch up with uh, Marvel and creating this whole cinematic universe. And maybe they needed to uh, 
go at their own pace and it would have paid off and i think now they still have a chance to do that and uh who knows what the marvel movies are going to be like after end games uh the second part of the avengers infinity war uh you know little saga that they got going on so maybe this is dc's opportunity if they keep putting stuff out like aquaman uh where it's fun and, and it doesn't always have to be lighthearted and fun i think that's where things got twisted maybe dc looked at marvel and was like oh fuck they've already got this whole light-hearted disney family vibe goofy fun um you know atmosphere that we have to be the dark and gritty and serious you know version or the market of superhero movies will become too over cluttered and there would be too much of the same shit so maybe that's a decision they didn't really get to make but being the second one in class they they didn't get to pick a seat you know so we'll see um but aquaman is cool like the the whole movie and i'm speaking mostly about the character he's just a cool fun badass uh guy that you can see yourself uh, having a few drinks with hanging out and and and, you know like invite him to like a pool party or something but uh but he's not that pretty boy blonde stuff i'm glad they didn't go in that direction but um one of the things I just want to touch on real quick is, you know, I saw the trailers. I'm trying to restrict myself from watching all these clips and trailers before I see a movie. It really changes your experience. Um, and I really hope that they find a new way to do trailers. I think that you can do um, something where either you can show a little, but you really you're showing a lot, or you can just film separate scenes that aren't even in the movie but still tell you what the movie's about and what's it you know what you're gonna pay to go see because you watch these trailers you kind of know the story arc you know i knew that aquaman was gonna get a trident and he was gonna get the uh orange and green suit like as cool as that is to see it in, on, on a trailer on my phone or on my computer i, I kind of wish i had that moment in the theater and um sadly you don't and a lot of these trailers can ruin movies for people i'm I'm, i don't like spoilers uh if i really want to be surprised and and just go into a movie blind and be you know just be entertained by thinking about well what's going to happen next are they you know it takes away a lot of suspense when i can start to watch a movie or a show and i know from the trailers well, we haven't seen this character here yet. That's going to happen. Oh, they're going to be fine or something like that. So, you know, Hollywood, if you're listening, which you're probably not, please figure out something. Do do it. Be creative. Just shoot some extra scenes that basically give you the general vibe of the movie and, and, and just put that out as trailers. And maybe once the movie's out, you can start showing clips as, you know, it's simple. Um, but the action was fucking awesome. The scene in Italy... Uh, with Aquaman and Black Manta and some other people even from the get-go Nicole Kidman has like an awesome scene where the action and the camera work is ah it's just really fun like the kinetic energy you feel from every punch and swing and everything that happens to these characters and the flips was really fun to see and uh, uh, just it's enjoyable and I don't care you know if some of it's CGI especially when they're fighting underwater it's still cool like I think they did a really good job they could have just easily just showed you two characters fighting and it could have been very boring but i think it was really cool on james wan's part the director and everybody involved uh you know to really have fun with that and so um if anything the action was really good so if you are a fan of good action or action films you're you're gonna enjoy this um so that's really gonna be it um it's got a 68 percent on ron tomatoes right now and i don't feel like that's justified especially after reading some of these critics reviews um supposedly the consensus is that aquaman swims with its entertainingly uh, blah, da, da, uh offering up a cgi superhero spectacle that delivers energetic action with an emphasis on good old-fashioned fun and that's it so when i scroll down here and i see people saying none of it makes a ripple of sense even when blown up to imax 3d said toronto star top critic peter howell like come on dude what um let's see washington post michael o sullivan said at times the plot feels like the 12 labors of hercules with a couple of extra labors thrown in just for the heck of it 
I mean, if he's talking about the pacing of just like, all right, we got to go here, we got to go here, I guess, but you know, I don't know. Like, I think it's just one of those films where you just need to accept it, have fun, don't think too deep into it. <laughs> and the only reason why I am is because I'm a fan of these heroes, these comic book movies, and for me, it's it's a different experience than for someone who is maybe a critic of just all movies or, you know, doesn't really know much about these characters, but, um, Let's see, Peter Tra uh, Travers from the Rolling Stones said, not, e not even an up for anything Jason Momoa can save Aquaman from being a joke. Still, the fun is a relief after all the recent DCEU superhero gloom. Any fish epic that finds time to show us an octopus. Oh, okay, okay. Well, so that's just like... I don't know. I just don't understand if that's what is really making this movie a, 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 you know, for you, a splat or whatever they do on here. I think it's just a fun movie. Have a good time. Go see it. Go support it. Um, it's not 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I just want to take this moment because I know I mentioned uh, Rotten Tomatoes on the Spider, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse review and I need to probably take a step back, but I'd like to address it because I don't really judge my opinion on Rotten Tomatoes. But I want people to understand that when you see 68%, that's not like when you were in school and you got a 68 of 100, so it's a D. No, that just means that 68% of people who reviewed it, they thought it was above 60%. So there could be 68% of people who said it's 100 and it's like a masterpiece, a 10 out of 10, but then you had that other percentage of people who thought the opposite. So then it, it, it kind of averages out. So please, that's why I just encourage you that no matter what I think or say about this movie, check it out for yourself. Make the make that opinion of your own. Um, don't just listen to what these critics quote unquote say on Rotten Tomatoes or wherever. You know, uh, just have judgment for yourself. Uh, if your friends or anybody else, maybe there's somebody you vibe really well with, like a YouTuber, and they say they liked it, then, and, and, you know, maybe you relate to their opinion in the past. I mean, I still feel like we should encourage each other to check out stuff on our own and not just leave it up to other people to decide what we might think is good or bad. You, you never know what you could be missing out on. And, um, you know, just use common sense, but look, it's fun. If you're having family or, you know, people around for the holidays, go check this out. Um, and you'll have a good time. I think my only two gripes personally were just the pacing was really fast. Um, but you can understand to a certain degree. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the back and forth with the origins, but, um, Hey, those are like little nitpicks, in my opinion. Everything else is great. Uh, the themes, uh, the visual spectacle of it, the fun lightness, um, the cast, the direction, everything, the action. So go check it out for yourself and let me know what you guys thought of the movie. And we can probably geek out, nerd out on a deeper level if you like. Uh, but I just like to kind of keep these as spoiler free as possible unless it's something that I feel like truly deserves a spoiler talk vibe uh, but other than that it's going to be it for me i hope you guys are enjoying these uh reviews i'm not a movie critic or a professional reviewer or whatever so i'm only going to really talk about the things that i enjoy and that i feel like i want to talk about and lately that's been spider-man into the spider-verse and aquaman so uh expect more things in the future but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and go check out aquaman if you liked what you heard and i will talk to you guys later Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that review. I hope you guys are enjoying these reviews as a whole. Um, this is just a friendly reminder uh, to follow Wonder Soul and Wonder Streams on Twitter and Instagram and to drop a like and a subscription to the Wonder Soul YouTube channel. Um, please share these around with friends and family that you think would be interested with any of the topics featured in the podcast as well as these reviews. And that just helps us grow and really do appreciate your time and your attention and just 
yeah, your support overall for Wonder Soul as um, a podcast. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you once again. And uh, do you guys want to see more reviews um, in general, just of things from the past or current or up? You know, just let me know uh, the vibe that you guys are looking forward to when it comes to this kind of stuff because i can really geek out nerd out uh, about a lot of things but it's just about finding the um the reason to i guess <laughs> and um so yeah so i enjo- uh, i enjoy these uh i enjoy going to see these movies and then talking about it especially with y'all and i just want to see what you guys thought of the movie and what you guys thought of uh the episode so you know if you're listening to this on youtube just drop a comment and tell me what you guys thought of the movie in this episode and don't forget to check us out on twitch at wonder streams where we stream games uh we, we do live podcast shows with me and my friends and other guests so go ahead and check us out on twitch as well um but other than that i hope you guys have a good day good night whenever you're listening to this and uh, look forward to doing another review for whatever's coming out next i'm not sure what that's going to be but either way thank you guys for your time thank you for your support hope you guys are doing well bye